At its most fundamental level, the series of mathematical numbers, as it is currently understood, presents itself as a pattern of infinite positions. Each number corresponds to a position in the infinite pattern, and each position dif differs from the others, only within the mathematical series, i.e. they are not unique or different in themselves. The ontological weight of each number, however large or small, is exactly identical. The numbers 1 and 10, for example, refer to different positions in the series, but do not carry any essentially different ontological characters. Once again, it is a matter of positional ontology in which the, activate, the activation of a possible position is ontologically equivalent to the activation of any other position. We already observed this phenomenon in Chapter 1, when we looked at the way in which existence that are reduced to serial entities may ultimately become nothing more than activators of one or another position. The thing that activates a position in a series is no longer a thing, but as we saw in the first hypostasis, it becomes merely the being the case of a state of affairs. For example, within a financial series, is of little or no importance whether the dollar comes from the child slave labor or from the increase in the estimated value of a property. The thing that occupies the position of a dollar is ontologically void, and in any case entirely equivalent in each of its infinite possible manifestations. Likewise, within such an ontology, the death of one soldier and that of a thousand civilians are just a matter of positions within a series while the thing that went lost in either case is ontologically equivalent and ultimately void. Or, again, considering the citizenship and migration within such a perspective, the positions of citizen and illegal migrant may remain fixed, while the things that activate them case by case, regardless of their quantity, remain in themselves ontologically equivalent and ultimately devoid of autonomous existence. Only the position exists, and yet it too doesn't truly exist in itself. In themselves, mathematical numbers are nothing but empty positions, and they emerge meaningfully within Technic's world. One citizen, two thousand citizens, seven drowned migrants, three tons of timber, ten billion dollars. The thing that activates them in every case is ontologically equivalent and ultimately empty. Mathematical numbers thus exemplify a fundamental ontological principle that is operative in each and every series within Technic's cosmo cosmology. It is not a matter as many well-meaning humanists have often repeated, that our contemporary world things have been turned into numbers, rather, both things and numbers have been reduced on one same type of annihilating ontology. Yet, numbers have not always been like how we know them today. The nature of what we know as mathematics has itself progressively changed as reality systems have taken over the stage of history. If we observe mathematical tradition from the Eastern Mediterranean, through also to China and in India, and later Western Europe, up until the onset of early modernity, we find a form of arithmetic that would be more precise to describe as arithmology, or as is called today, numerology. And the relationship between numerology and philosophy is a well-documented, albeit overlooked historical fact. The first philosopher to claim this appellative Pythagoras was at the same time a philosopher, a magician, a theologian, and a numerologist. As René Guénon pointed out in the beginning of his programmatic volume, The Reign of Quantity and the Sign of the Times, the Pythagorean numbers envisioned as the principles of things are by no means numbers as understood by the moderns, whether the mathematicians or physicists, just as principle immutability is by no means the immobility of a stone, nor is the true unity or the uniformity of beings denuded of all their qualities. And to Pythagoras' philosophy, and indeed to the pre-modern mathematical tradition, was the notion of numbers, not as mere positions in a series, but as things in themselves. So powerful were the unique essence and existence of each number, particularly of those in the first decade, that those encompassed a fundamental aspect of the way in which reality was thought to be built. If we consider the number one for now, we don't simply encounter a sign goes for one indifferent bit of a thing, which is itself the principle of reality. One doesn't just mean unity, but a monad is the principle of unity personified. Indeed, strictly speaking, it is the principle of unity personified. Indeed, um, strictly speaking, one isn't even a number, but